So, hey Zeke, welcome to CryptoPyre UI and UX analysis of Elden Ring. Super excited about tonight. Um, been playing the game since the day it came out, and I've got a lot of opinions. Uh, Zeke, I know you've you've been playing and enjoying. Uh, you're several levels higher than me. Um, we're gonna keep this pretty spoiler free to the best of my abilities. We're mostly gonna be looking at the menus. Um, I will, I, I do have a special spoiler guard screen that will pop up uh, if I need to go look at the map or anything like that. Cause that's, that's been the number one thing that I've not wanted to see. Um, the game is so experiential that spoilers are kind of funny. It's like, I don't know, specific plot points don't, bother me as much but the experience of getting a new map fragment or meeting a new npc or meeting a new boss are the spoilers that i care about so i don't want to i definitely don't want to uh, accidentally ruin that for anyone here in the hogwarts zone that's been my favorite zone so far snorkelboard that the, the music and the vibe and just the uh atmosphere um <laughs> i feel like that was one of the few areas i was actually at the right place, at the right level, at the right time. So it was like correctly challenging. Uh, yeah, I don't know about you all, but I've, I've wound up going places where I'm clearly, you know, not even close to how high of a level I should be, uh, which leads to hilarious results. Um, yeah, so before we really dive in, I mean, the, the the biggest thing like I want you all to know is that I think this the UI and UX of this game is excellent and um, From Software did an incredible job with it. So I, I am going to be critiquing some of the areas that I think need improvement, but it's by no means a indictment on the entire project. I think it's a triumph in game design. So hats off to From Software. So this is purely from a place of like adoration. Um, yeah, I think best place to start. So there's this notion of the game logic stack and in software design, you typically have business rules that inform how the software works. Games are a little bit different because games, I feel like you have principles and values that are the base layer of the pyramid that things are built up on. Um, from the principles and values, you get mechanics. Mechanics come out of those things. Mechanics are things like fundamentals, like uh, does your game have hit points? Does your game have experience points? Does your game have items? Does your game have combat? those mechanics come out of the fundamentals of the game. Um, for example, like Stardew Valley or a game like that, uh, I don't think there's any combat or fighting in it because it's fundamentally about relationships and farming. So it doesn't make sense to have a whole combat mechanic in it. Um, of course, Elden Ring is all about combat and fighting and exploration. So then the layer above mechanics and fundamentals gets into implementation decisions why does this button do this and not that? What do the players need to be able to do? And then that finally kind of gets to the the last the last mile of the of the program of the game, which is UI and UX, which is what we're talking about today. So <laughs> Stardew does have combat. Okay, well I haven't played it. I just <laughs> uh, assumed it doesn't. Disregard that. Um, and just so we have a rough baseline, um, UI and UX and what's the difference. So UI stands for user interface, UX stands for user experience and user interface typically means what something actually looks like and what it sounds like and how it works when you're manipulating it or interacting with it. And then user experience is the bigger picture of how it works. When does that button appear where is it in the layout where is it in the screen why is it here what is it next to what's the proximity 
how does all that fit together? What's kind of the architecture of all these smaller user interface components? So UI is how it looks and UX is how it works. That's a very simple example of it. Um, people have written books about the differences and have argued at great length about it. So uh, plenty more resources that I'm happy to link out to for anyone that's curious. All right, so let's dive into it. Um, I do wanna to try to keep this about an hour. Uh, you know, I could probably talk about this forever. Okay, let's get some chill table of lost grace fire tunes. Okay, so yeah, let's just dive right in. So the first thing I wanna talk about is um, uh, time. Time is one of my favorite topics. And I know, I think most of us, yeah, I know everyone in chat's a musician, so you can all appreciate this. Um, one of the fundamental, one of those lower layer decisions that was made in this game is the fact that time continues. When you pause the game, action still happens. And that has a lot of really interesting cascading effects into the controls because when you open the menu, um, you can still run around and you can still get attacked. And this is something you're sort of priced into doing if you're going to make any type of online game. Um, it's sort of ridiculous to even like say, but if pausing the game actually stopped the game and you were multiplayering, it would pause the game for everyone and it'd be an awful experience. So because of what the game is and what these fundamental mechanics and overall premise of the game is they have this design constraint where if you pull up the menu time keeps going so what does that mean for for our controller and for our user interface well uh, first thing when we pull up the main menu um, it's only on the sides so we can see we can still see our character and we can still move and maybe escape if we need to so that's a pretty interesting dynamic that um, you might not be used to if you've been playing a lot of a lot of games that aren't online or multiplayer. Hey, Dog Salad, thanks so much for following. Welcome. So this notion that time continues even when the menu's up leads to a lot of interesting decisions that had to be made in the menus. So I'm running around and I'm moving the camera with the with the D-pads. Um, so then you have to switch up, or with the, with the joysticks, you know, um, you have to switch up to the D-pad if you want to move through items, which I think is a really fine compromise. But what this does is it disables the typical functionality that you would have on the D-pad. So that means when you have the menu open, you can't switch items, you can't switch weapons, um, you can't change your spells and incantations. And this is a pattern that we'll see over and over again because the game prioritizes combat and movement over everything else in the game. And some of my critiques about the user interface directly stem from this. Um, hey, Tej, welcome. So then, uh, just of note, even when we're in here, when we go into items or any deeper menu, um, there's an affordance where the opacity is lower so we can sort of see what's going on, but the game's still going. And that's just really important because I can't tell you how many times I've been looking at an item or looking at crafting something or a new piece of gear, and the game's still going in the background. So they do, prioritize your menu and prioritize your, you know, all your equipment and reading it and the legibility of all that. But the game's still going in the background and you can sort of see what's happening. Uh, this is on a PC, Dog Salad. This is on a Republic of Gamers. It's actually just a laptop and I'm um, quite pleased I'm able to run it on high. Uh, I think it's on high and everything. Yeah. 
yeah, I've been really happy with the, the frame rate and with everything, frankly, just, just incredible. Um, yeah, and just for context, I'm level, um, so you just joined, I'm level uh, 72, but I'm going to try my hardest to not spoil anything. You might see some items, but I've got a, got this nifty um, shield here, the sensor, in case I need to do anything that might give something away. So not going to be talking about any locations or stories, but we will be talking about some items and interactions. Okay, so I think that's all I want to say about, um, you know, time, how there is no pausing. If you have a menu up, time keeps going. I think that all makes sense with the, uh, the, the core values of the game. Um, so let's talk about messages. Uh, messages are a component that let you share messages with other players in other worlds. So even though this is primarily a single player game first, as you run around, you can see these um, messages. Someone left this. You can appraise messages. Uh, you can appraise them good or bad. This person said, behold, fire. Um, I think that is that is a true and accurate message. So I'm going to appraise that as good. And here we can see a bunch of UI patterns that emerge. So when we approach something that we can interact with, you know, a little box comes up that says read message. Uh, quick tangent on this. I switched my read message button, my main action button, with the bottom most button on the, on the controller because that's what it's like in other Souls games. Um, I switched it with the top one. And out of the box, the bottom one is jump, but the top one is interact with an item. And I just didn't want to like reprogram that part of my brain, so I switched these. So if you haven't done that, and you're struggling with that, that's something you can do. Which is really, really nice that you can come in here and change your controls around to suit your preferences. Uh, I typically really like to just go with whatever the developers recommend in a game and just try to run with that, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't handle it on this one. I just had to switch it. Okay, so we come up, interact with the message. We get a dialog box. Um, you know, this is a sort of interesting decision that to rate it good or poor, we have three actions. We can close the dialog, we can rate it good, and we can rate it poor. Um, Good and poor are the are these other two buttons up here, you know, on historically on controllers that's select and start. Uh, I don't even know what these are called. We have two boxes and hamburger menu, three lines. Um, again, because you can't you can't have your D pad your your joystick select different options, so they have buttons correspond to different options. Which I think in general is a pretty fine example, but this one's sort of weird, and this introduces a pattern where good is on the left and poor is on the right, which in my mind also correlates with yes being on the left and no being on the right, and that's a pattern that's going to be broken a little bit in the future. So here we have our first dialogue box, and this is where one of my big critiques comes in. So you'll notice this dialog box defaults to OK, this confirmation box. Uh, not all confirmation boxes de default to OK. They make some assumptions about what's safe to default to OK and what's not safe. And I wish they had done it the same across the board. So we just applauded that OK. Um, if we wanted to use a consumable, uh, yes. So that one we just use. Interesting. So there are some consumables that had a confirmation window that popped up, and those two didn't. Maybe I'll discover those later in the notes, but. So what we just did was just pop the inventory, um, selected an item. And we have some options here. Uh, I think something that's sort of weird is this notion of use versus use selected. 
So use is only going to use one, whereas use selected, you get this how many? Um, selected isn't the right word for that, in my opinion. I think that it should be used multiple. That's what it was in Bloodborne. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm really not sure why, why they use the word selected here. But anyways, so it's used selected. But here, um, I think this is good to have this actually, to have your option default to no. Because with consumable items, you use them once and they're gone. Um, it's good to have another check, so if you're just spamming your accept button, it doesn't accidentally use an item that you didn't want to use. So I think this is good. I think all of these should have defaulted to no, but they don't. And because they don't, it makes you sort of pause for a second each time um, they've got a nice macro at the bottom, which I just noticed now talking uh, this. Let me run a hope you can see this line. So down here, there's this, um, you know, you can hit A to use it or the left and right bumpers to increment it by 10. I think that's really nice. I just, I just noticed that now. And this is something that you'll see time and time again in the game where uh, at the bottom of the menu, there is a this little, this little tray that maps the controls to the interactions on the menu. And for the most part, I think this is really good. But again, in some places, they break this pattern and it gets really confusing. And we'll jump over to that next. So, you know, use selected, I wish it was used multiple, use selected, I actually didn't use that for a long time because I didn't even know what it meant. Um, and I don't even know what leave selected means, like, so this is a mystery to me. If anyone knows in chat, please. Oh, so... So I'm, I'm learning, just poking around. You can apparently select multiple items at once and then I guess use them all at once. Uh, kind of nifty, kind of weird. But there are a lot of items in this game. Um, we're in the tools category of our inventory. Uh, there's ashes, there's crafting materials, there's bolstering materials, there's key items. I think this is laid out really well. There's no filtering and there's no winnowing or tags or categories or anything. And I think that actually really works well with the storyline of the game because and the setting. Um, because filtering and tagging and categorizing and organizing is a very like technological thing. You know, if we were in a mech or a starship or something, that might make more sense. But here you just have a backpack and pouches, so all your stuff is kind of thrown together. So I, I feel like moving through all this is kind of like rummaging around in my pack. So from a story and flavor perspective, I think that makes sense. But something that doesn't make sense and that has been a big source of frustration for me is when this happens. So the other night I was running through a dungeon and I found um, Old Fang. And I was being chased by a bunch of enemies. This was, you know, on a corpse hanging off a cliff somewhere. And I, I actually like stopped and took a photo of this because I wanted to share it on the stream and probably died afterwards. But <laughs> you hit okay, and then you have to remember that you got an old fang and you have to know where to find it. So one of my biggest critiques of the user experience is on this page, it would have been really, really, really nice to have, uh, in addition to okay, the option to just okay, which all that does is dismiss this window. There really should have been another one that says inspect or examine or show an inventory and that would pop your inventory and take you directly to it because your only clue as to what this is 
aside from what it looks like and looking at this this could frankly be a weapon or it could be a craft item or it could be a key item or it could be a talisman this is so ambiguous as to what this item is your only clue is this icon in the upper left hand corner which if you've played the game for dozens and dozens of hours you start to pick up on this but at the start i had no clue what this is and I, I think this is uh I think this is crafting materials. This is um yes, so this this is crafting materials. And we can indeed confirm that uh, right here. So up at the top under crafting materials, that's selected. This is in the industry what's called mystery meat navigation. That's where you have icons that don't have words by them typically, even though in this case we do have crafting materials right at the top uh, between inventory and the icons. But typically mystery meat navigation is something you really want to avoid because you're relying on people remembering icons and associating those icons with, with abstract concepts. So it's abstract concept connected with another abstract concept and your only hope in remembering it is this little smudge of pixels. Um, like this, so bolstering materials, these are all the items that you use to level up your weapons and such. Um, I haven't actually read the word bolstering materials before, I didn't know that that's what it was called. Uh, it would have been cool if whenever I pick up a smithing stone, it says smithing stone bolstering material. Just because there's so many, I mean, tools, ashes, crafting materials, bolstering, key items, sorceries, incantations, ashes, melee, ranged, arrows, shields, head, chest, arms, leg, I mean there's there's a dozen there's a dozen or so different categories. So just a little bit of more affordances and help to show you what the items are. Um, okay, we've got to go out to the field now for the next one and get into some trouble. So I'm gonna throw up the shield. Oh, dog saddle, I'm sorry that they didn't optimize for PS5. That's really unfortunate. Uh, at least you got a PS5, that's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to one of the earlier areas because uh, we need to get into combat. Um, Okay, so we're going to be talking about our horse. Um, so, when you're on your horse, we actually have to. Uh, I'm going to pass the time today so this is easier to see. So we need to uh, take a bunch of damage now. Hopefully, hopefully this doesn't result in a big damage. But do to do. Okay, horse is horse is down. Uh, it's a spirit horse. It's named Torin. It's okay. No animals were harmed in the making of the stream. I'm just gonna run away so that. Okay, I can't run away. Game just pause. And I, of course, clear everything out so I can't. <laughs> I'm not ready for. Equip all my items. Um, well, 
Okay. So when you get attacked and Warren badly dies, um, it creates an interesting edge case where if you try to summon him again, you can't. He's dead. And you need to use a Flask of Crimson Tears to summon him. So what happens is when you are in combat so we gotta do this again. When you're in combat and do it, a new dialogue box comes up. Okay. Let's see. Oh, why isn't it working now? So they patched it because what was happening is you're in combat horn gets taken out and if you want to bring it back you use a flask and then a dialogue box would appear that would say use a flask of crimson tears to revive Torin. and it's a complete anti-pattern because you're in the middle of combat and you're trying to use a, a potion ostensibly to heal yourself and it would completely break the flow um, it looks like they changed it, because Torrin just died twice and it didn't happen. I guess I'll try one more time. I don't know if anyone in chat knows what I'm doing wrong, that I can't reproduce this. Let me know. Huh. Yeah. So I hope they changed that, because that's... You've never seen that message? Yeah, that was happening to me. It's like, you're in this really intense fight. You're fighting a gigantic monster. You really need to get on your horse and escape. And then this menu comes up. Or you really need to use a potion yourself. And then all of a sudden, you've got to switch to the D-pad to select yes to revive him. All right, I'm going to try it one more time. But I think they fixed it, so that's great. It's patched away. All right, cool. So that's the other great thing about games nowadays is if something's not working, you can just patch it. Super weird, never encountered that. 50 hours on the clock, maybe specific scenarios, boss fights or field. Oh, you know, it might be, it might be a field boss, you're right. <laughs> Let's go to this, this first dragon over here that I haven't taken out yet. The dragon does it for sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, the, the dragon was the first thing I found because I saw so many videos of the asshole on the horse, and I just... I'm like, I'm not even going to engage with him, I'm going to go the other way. And then I wound up over here. But for those of you that don't know, this is like right at the start of the game. There's this dragon that's probably level 80 or something. I don't know how much damage I'll do to it. No, I can probably take that out now. I just see it.
see if we can do this. So Zeke, you've experienced it. Um, I guess it's patched away. Great. Uh, okay, let's talk about the. Let's talk about the sounds. So one of the best pieces of audible user interface is the what I'm calling the death rattle. Um, whenever you or any creature in the game dies, there is a specific sound that plays. Um, it sounds kind of like metal clanking together or a sword or something. So listen carefully. that like high pitched wink that's a really really important noise because it means you can stop attacking and one of the things that I've been working really hard on on learning is to listen for that noise and to stop attacking when I hear it because <laughs> stop stop he's already dead but it's actually a really important tactical cue because if there's other enemies, you don't want to waste another attack on something that's already going down. So that one was kind of hard to hear because it's just one hit. But definitely listen for that. Once I noticed that that's what it meant, it really changed how I played the game. And to my knowledge, it's absolutely everything that dies. We could go kill some innocent rams, even though I really don't like doing that. Um, for science, though. We have no. There it was. Yeah, and <laughs> it's one of the first series of the game, and I still haven't found all the items, so. Just to show you how big this is. Alright, let's, uh, let's go back to. Let's go back to the table. I don't know why I unclicked all my all my items. It's like, oh, I don't want to start from a confusing place for everybody, then immediately go into combat and just get destroyed. Okay. Um. So multiplayer. <laughs> so well, let's play a game. Um. Can you spot the anti-pattern? I'll give you I'll give you about a minute or two to see what's what's wrong with this screen. And an anti-pattern is something that has been established. This is how this works. This is consistently the way this thing is done. Um, we're gonna change it for some reason that I don't know what it is. And this, this particular anti-pattern uh, almost made me think that it was impossible to do something. So, any, any ideas what the, what the anti-pattern on the multiplayer screen might be? Nothing. 
none. All right. So if we What is this doing? What what is what is settings doing? Loading way over here. Now, logically, it makes sense because this indeed is the settings for multiplayer passwords and group passwords, so that's rational. But the anti-pattern is putting this this helper text an icon up here and not down the lower left hand corner by everything else so i was on this page trying to multiplayer with a friend of mine and he's like oh yeah you just have to go into settings and set the multiplayer like, what do you mean go into settings there is no settings hey cho Pacho sauce welcome thanks for the follow so th this one drives me absolutely nuts, and I don't, I, this just makes no sense to me. So, you know, if you hit Y, this pops up, um, and then you can enter it, but I don't know. Dog Salad 2000. I just did some research, and apparently there is a difference between Torrent getting killed and if you just getting knocked off him, which unsummons him. Oh, if he gets killed, you'll get that message still. But apparently it's more likely that you just kind of got knocked off him, so you can resummon him. I've somehow never seen the message in 50 hours of playing. Well, you, sir, or madam, are a better horseback rider horseback mommy or daddy than I am because I see it all the time. I assume that with getting knocked off was synonymous with Torrent dying. I thought that those were the same thing. Um, so yeah, I wonder, it's gotta be something that like does enough damage that kills him and knocks you off that triggers that. Um, Trying to think who where we might be able to reproduce that without giving away too much. Um oh I, I know a place we could go. Yeah, well, well let's go try that because I really want to show that menu because it's 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 a weird one. It's an anomaly. So yeah, um come in here, you can enter your password. Uh I'm on a PC, so I don't know what the keyboard input looks like on PS5, but I just have a keyboard so you can type it in. And this is great, this all works. Uh, again, we have a dialog box with okay and back. Um, that all makes sense, that's nice. <laughs> you feed him a ton of robo raisins, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good parent. Um, yeah, let's, we'll, let's try to, I know a place. I know a place that is uh, quite hostile, and um... yeah, again, for those of you just tuning in, I'm doing my best to not spoil any map stuff or anything, but um, this is a scientific stream, so this is important that we perhaps... Okay, so we're in Kaled, which if you haven't been here yet, it's a... Uh, this is a bad place. Let's see. So anyone that's been on this canyon knows where I'm going. <laughs> Hi. Oh well, that was too much damage. <laughs> Uh, that was too much damage. Where? I wonder how we could do this. Um, damage on Torrent's gotta persist, right? Like, this does too much. Um, I 
already killed the dragon, so... Let's try here. Yeah, I sort of want to avoid any field bosses just because that kind of gets into spoiler territory. These are some big old, big old guys. <laughs> that did no damage, he missed. So we, we heard that, that noise you were talking about earlier, that death rattle noise. Uh, so I guess that means that that took Torn out. So I'll try to do that again. Uh, if we don't get it this time, we'll move on. And, you know, I was thinking like, Okay, so I've got a problem with this. I've got a I've got a strong critique of this interaction. What would I do differently? Uh, I haven't been able to come up with a better solution. So there's got to be one. Um, I like the decision to make Torrent also use your same health potion. I think that's really elegant but yeah I wish I almost wish you could set it to default to uh, when you summon him to just use a potion if you have it So I just tried to summon him, and this menu comes up. And now we're in combat, we're in this intense situation, and I have to take my thumb off the D-pad, or off the joystick, I keep swapping those, off the joystick to move to yes. So in this situation, I do not like that the, the UI defaults to no, because we're in an emergency right now. I need the horse. I need to get out of here. And to have to spend the extra brain cycles to then make my decision here is just, it's so much. I, I can't tell you how many times I've died from this menu. Um, so we're going to say no. And then you can still use a potion normally, which is really good. Uh, but let me try to summon. When we try to summon them, this this is the menu that comes up. Thanks for that research, Dog Salad. It's really good to know. Um, but I mean, so that that opens up a really another interesting user experience discrepancy in that I didn't know that Torrent like had HP, so to speak. He th there's no bar anywhere. He can take some damage before that happens, but uh, how much? How, how, like, where's that? So maybe it would have been really nice to have when you summon him to have his HP too and you can actually see it. And then it'd make it more clear that um, 
you know, he's dead and you need to use a flask. There's a lot of different ways they could have done this one, but I should also note that it's really important that this feature exists because um, if you could just infinitely summon Torrent, that's kind of broken, and you could just horseback battle forever, and you'd sort of have like infinite HP to some extent if you did that. And you might have jumped somewhere that you need him to jump, to double jump to escape from. So it's really important that something does happen to him, you can get him back. But I just sort of handled this really differently. All right, we're coming up on an hour. Uh, only got a few more things left. Um, and of course, if you've got anything you wanna look at or want my opinion on, I'll be happy to share. Um, so we are going to look at the map. I am going to only keep us in Limgrave so that I uh, won't spoil anything for anyone. Um, so this one was so, so not good that I, uh, I thought it was like a legit bug and totally broken. Very similar to my number one Souls UX gripe, which is that item pick up splash screens that block the screen until dismissed, especially mid battle. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we were just looking at with um, the old thing. Uh, the, the screen, yeah. So I, I don't know if you're in on the stream when we were talking about this, but this is better. I think this is better than it was in like DS1 and Bloodborne, I feel like in those, the menu box was higher and like completely covered you. This at least has some opacity to it or some transparency to it and you can see through it, but it's also quite, quite frustrating, which brings me to my number one ask for the game, uh, which is an MMO style history log of events. Uh, we'll talk about that kind of at the end. Because what they're solving for here is like, there's an item, this is important, you need to know about this, and then it goes away. If you add a layer of persistence somewhere where you can see what all your items are, that'd be a way to solve for it. Okay, so we're back at Lindgrave. So this is, oh, this is... Okay, so right there is a perfect example. I just apparently learned a new gesture. Um, but I was trying to read the message, and I just dismissed it, and now it's gone forever. I have no idea what I just learned. I guess it's the stance, but that's really frustrating. It's just, it blocks the screen. It blocks the screen, you're pissed off and frustrated that it blocks the screen because you're in the middle of not dying. You dismiss it, and then you don't know what it is. So it makes for a really confusing situation. Which gets a little bit back to the fundamentals and the founding principles of the game and that confusion and not having all the answers and not having things line up is kind of one of one of the principles that they're playing with. But I think there's healthy ways to do that and I think there's just frustrating ways to do that. And I I personally think this is a pretty frustrating way to do it. Because in, in real life, like if I was actually here, actually having to do all these horrible things myself. Um, I would know I would have a, a, a particular pouch or something in my armor that I would put all new items as, you know, my holding zone, my, my clearing house for new items or something. It's not like I just chuck it in my bag and forget about it, but I guess maybe that's what the characters do. All right, so we're going to look at the map. Um, I hope you're all okay with, yeah, this is fine. This is just the very first area of the game, so no, no spoilers here. Uh, but if I accidentally zoom out, I am sincerely sorry. Again, I'm level 70, so I've got a good chunk of the map revealed. Okay, so map. Map is a huge, huge development for a Soulsborne game because we've never had maps before. So this is absolutely vital to playing the game. Um, we can see terrain. <laughs> we, we, we can see flat and terrain. The game is... Souls form games are known as vertical platformers because of the verticality of all the levels. So 
this is actually sort of a troll in some ways because so many levels are so many layers that just having a satellite, you know, surveillance view of it really isn't helpful most of the time. But sometimes it, it is very helpful. So we see all of our sites at Grace, that's great. Um, if you don't know, one of the most recent patches have uh, icons for NPCs now, which is really, really nice. Uh, so here we can see Merchant Kale is here. Um, so probably one of the features that was added very much towards the end was the marker feature. So markers allow you to place these little mystery meat navigation markers anywhere on the map. There's like a sword and a skull, a uh, Sasquatch. That's a dog. Yeah, that's like a goat. Uh, we got some weed. We got a gem. That's a treasure chest, a flag, a tree, and then a castle of some sort. So you're only allowed 100 markers, which is what that 20 over 100 means. And our options on the screen are to add a marker. So we'll just add a sword there. Um, and you can nuke all markers, which is kind of terrifying. Uh, I really hope there's a confirmation. Are you sure you want to do this behind this option? because I would be very sad if I accidentally hit that and all my markers were erased. But my big gripe is how do you remove the marker? Oh no, I accidentally put it there. I don't need it anymore. Oh, I went there and I found the thing. Um, how do you get rid of this? So my first thought was let's look at the bottom of the screen and find the button that deletes the thing. Uh, you can place a beacon, close, marker, sites of grace, multiplayer status, zoom, nothing to delete uh, okay um, so I thought that for the longest time for probably 50 levels that if you place a marker it's there forever until you remove all your markers because that's the only option um, turns out the way you remove a marker is you hover over it and select the same marker again at the same spot. You see in the lower left hand corner where it says remove marker. If you're on a different marker, that's not the sword. This one's a sword. You can set another one. Ooh, this is fun. You can apparently stack all of them on top of each other. Nice. <laughs> so these have a these have a Z index. They have a concept of who's on top. So we've just stacked all the markers on this one tree. Um, beacon, sorry, I keep using the word marker. A marker is... Oh yeah, no, that's right. Uh, a marker is what we just placed. A beacon is the... Are, are these, which show up on your map. So with beacons, to remove them, you, you add and remove them with the same button. You, you know, hit A to add them, hit A to remove. Yeah, exactly, Zeke. Um... Oh, it's different than PS5? How's it different? So with markers, you have to just, you select the same one again and it removes it. Oh, and apparently it doesn't sack them, it just replaces them if you put it at the same spot. Never mind, okay. <laughs> so yeah, th th this pattern just drove me nuts. You know, I just, I could not see it. The only clue you get is that remove marker says in the lower left hand corner. But, yeah. So, again, like, the, the, the UI and UX of this game is overwhelmingly incredible. There's just some things like that that, you know, is maybe late in development. They only had a few cycles of playtesting and whatever. But it, it makes for just some confusing experiences. <laughs> You'll keep knitting. Excellent. M knitting on... Mitting is one of my favorite new words from the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. It means um, just sort of enjoying the conversation that's happening and not necessarily participating, which is one of my favorite things to do at parties, just like sitting on the couch, watching everyone else talk. It's, uh, it's very pleasant. So... 
so yeah the, the number one thing i want in this game i'll, I'll give an image uh, to show you all what i'm talking about if none of you have had the joys of playing an mmo uh i guess world of warcraft is kind of canonical example i haven't played much world of warcraft i played a lot of final fantasy 11 um i played a little bit of wow uh a teeny tiny bit of 14. trying to find a good example um wow this ui is very old <laughs> okay here's a good example So in MMOs, lots of stuff happens. They are, you're often raiding with dozens of people, fighting multiple enemies. There's stuff flying around all over the place. It's hard to keep track of it. The way they solve for this is they introduce this concept of a, um, a history log. So over on the side, on the left column, you can see this running let me get my rule over here um you can see this running tally of all the events that have happened and i definitely don't want this on screen in the game but i would love to have just a place in the menu that i could go back and review all the events that have happened in the game like you know took X damage from something, picked up a old thing here, torrent died, used a potion, used a key item, talked to an NPC, the dialogue of what the NPC said. Um, it's definitely something I experienced in this game is a lot of stuff can happen really fast and it shifts your attention really fast, which is fun because it keeps you on your toes, but then there's so many items that I don't even know that I have or where they came from or if it's a key item. So what I've developed to kind of counteract that is I actually will unload my, basically all my gear at every site of grace I go to so that when I go to sort chests or when I look at my inventory, um, I know if I picked up a new weapon, it's not one of my two main weapons. It's going to be, you know, something new so I can easily find it. So that's like a little hack that I developed to find, you know, items that I might have picked up. Uh, but I don't do that for everything um, just because I don't. So like, this is new. I, I know that I just picked this up. This is great. Um, red main shirt coat. Like, am I going to wear this? Probably not. So in storage so an activity log would be my top my top wish for this uh one more note before we wrap up we're, we're just over an hour now one more note is i really wish you could see item details from your equipment screen it absolutely boggles my mind that you can't um part of this is due to the contextual controls so on this screen x is remove okay that's under equipment but if we go to inventory x is actually switch display and look at the details so that's just another weird kind of discrepancy because the equipment screen for all intents and purposes is the exact same thing as the inventory screen it's just kind of a faster way to equip things i don't think you can actually equip things from the inventory screen let's see if uh no you can't so the equipment screen is the only place you can actually equip them but the only place you can look at the details is in inventory and the same is true with ashes of war which I find especially frustrating because if I'm in the Ashes of War menu, um, 
you can't... Um, I'm hitting X right now, which, if we were in inventory, would show me the details of the thing. I, I don't know what these are. I don't know what they do. I don't... It, you know, I see the stats changing, but, like, what's, what's the effect? What's the ability? What does it do? So we were just on Gravitas. Let's go over to our inventory again. And, and this is frustrating, too. You actually have to leave the site of Grace, open your inventory, go over to Ashes of War, and then you can come down here and find it, and then you can hit X to look at what it does. So, and there's really important information here. Usable on all melee armaments, uh, small armaments and whips expected, like, accepted. That's really important information. And, um, you know, that this is a magic affinity, that's really important information. I would love to have that information available for me on the screen that I'm actually equipping it. So the, the, the pattern is just, it's very, it's very time consuming to go, you know, Ashes of War, what's the thing? Oh, do I want to use this? Uh, Sure, maybe, I guess. And then come all the way back out, go all the way back in. So th this is an example of user experience. This is how something works, this is the flow, and this is the pattern that emerges because of how the flow is designed. Yeah, no, I can't even find it. Where is it? Where's your scan? Where's your... Uh, I also wish Ashes of War and Ashes were named different things. Um, you know, Ashes should just be called Summons or something. I like the flavor, but it's kind of confusing. Oh yeah, oh so, so this is another good one. Uh, we just equipped a Gravitas Ashes of War, and it's no longer in our inventory. So if you have an Ash of an Ash of War equipped to a weapon, you the only way to see it to see part of what it does is to go to your equipment. Yeah, th th this is just a snarl to me. Um, this does not give me the information I need to make my decisions in a timely manner. Yeah, it's super weird. So our greatsword has this equipped, but if we want to actually read the details on it now, the only way to do that, to my knowledge, is we have to unequip it, we have to remove it from the weapon, add a site of grace, then go into inventory and read it. Um, totally fixable. Uh, it feels just kind of like a result of, again, emergence and what they're prioritizing where. Um, a huge part of the game is menu diving and item management and inventory management, which I do enjoy, but I really like it to be streamlined because it is kind of a, it is kind of a clerical slash administrative task, as it were. So I've been having an absolute blast with this game. Um, it's been a really pleasant piece of escapism for me. Uh, I just beat Bloodborne for the first time like a week before this came out. And that was definitely uh, coordinated. Um, Bloodborne is absolutely brilliant. And uh, I don't know, this game, I, I can't remember the last time I've had a game that checked all the boxes for me. So the UI and UX of the game is one of the reasons I think it's so effective. I actually went back and was playing uh, OG Dark Souls, Dark Souls 1, for a little while earlier this year just because I was so hyped about this game. And it's, it's, its age shows with the user experience and the items and everything. And with each entry, they've just iterated more and more so that does it for this stream. Uh, thanks for hanging out, everyone. It's really fun. 
and um yeah i didn't know how a stream like this would go i'm a i'm a designer i'm obviously very passionate about this stuff and it's fun to talk about so if you want to see more streams like this let me know um we have a discord server uh jump in there um there's links for it floating around but thanks so much for hanging and um see you next time farewell